All right, so we need to uh, make a note here. Very important thing once we're dealing with WordPress. WordPress, WordPress has two faces. We have uh, consumer side, creator side. You can also say front end and back end. We can say the main site. We can say the dashboard. So the main site versus the dashboard. When when we went to simply the name of your site, localhost slash WordPress, that was the front end. That's what people would see in the real world. Technically, just to be more obvious eventually, victorsbakery.com. That's the main site. That's what people would see when they want to go to my website, buy the products and such. Then the dashboard, the back end, would be victorsbakery.com slash wp-admin. Right now, where I last left my site, I'm in the dashboard. I'm in the back end. I'm in the creator side. So in my handout there, I've got a little reminder of how to jump back and forth between the two. Because we need to sometimes see the front end to determine that our colors are correct and the alignment of pictures. We need to see our site, how it would look like to our visitors. And then other times, we need to be in the back end to make changes, to upload a new product, to change the colors, to put the alignment of our graphics and such. So we need to get used to the back end and the front end. And you do that very easily right here. We're in the dashboard. And on the top left corner, it's got the name of my site. If you called your site something else, it obviously says there something else. But when you hover over the name of your site on the top left corner, you get Visit Site. Click on that, and that takes you back to the front end. It takes you back to look at your site as how your, uh, your, your customers would. And it would look like that. Got some text, links. Good. Then if you hover over it again, then it says Dashboard. So we use that link to jump back and forth between front end and back end. Shortcut is simply click on the name of your site, front end, click on the name of your site, back end. That's just a shortcut, same thing. So we need to either edit, we, ed we either need to view the front end or edit the back end. And that's something that we'll get used to doing. What you could do, because you can only see one thing at a time, you could do the right click, open in a new window. You could have one window for the back end and one window for the front end and look at two things at once. You guys, you guys have nice big monitors there, so you can put them side by side. Or if you're you know, a hardcore uh, web developer like me, you've got two monitors. One monitor doing this, one monitor that. Actually, I've got three monitors, not to show off, but I've got three <laughs> monitors. Lots of stuff going on on three monitors. It looks like war games in my office. So you could do that in that you've got two windows side by side something like that when you do the right click open in a new window on the Mac I think you have to command click and you get the right click and it opens a new window so in my notes I've got that uh, login screen and such um, there's a little bit of practice here if you kind of want to practice this I'm not gonna do this just yet uh, I'm gonna look over a couple of uh, concepts uh, then then we'll uh, actually let me give you a let me give you a new handout in the network folder I'm going to put in a new handout um, let's see handout number three this is the same on both Windows and the Mac I'll put here the PDF and the Word version if you want it but I put a new item there in the network folder, Campos eCommerce 3 Basic WordPress. This is a quick one page, like cheat sheet on, on the WordPress interface in the dashboard. The printer is off at the moment, so you can print that out during the next break. But you can copy number three. We'll look at it briefly and then we'll we'll do what it what it has. So this again reminds you. 
your front end is localhost slash the name of your website. The back end is localhost slash the name of your website slash WP admin. I also note that on the Mac, uh, you probably will have to type localhost colon 8888 and then WordPress. Um, and whoops, I seem to have mistyped or something here. On the Mac, it's the same thing. On the Mac, uh, it seems to be blank. That should be local localhost. Yeah, I don't know, is it invisible for you too? It says no. Mac. Oh, it's there? Hmm, okay. But it's the same right there. It's uh, localhost colon 8888 slash WordPress, or the name of your site, slash WP admin. And I misspelled admin right there. Sorry, admin, not ad in, admin. I'm going to have to uh, talk to my proofreader. Okay, so um, here is a, is a quick uh, definition of these basic built-in um, menu items of the dashboard. You see we've got these, uh, we've got these items here. Uh, so you can read on them on your own in, in detail, but okay, we're in the dashboard. It says we're in the dashboard home. Uh, you can switch back and forth to the main website. We've got posts. We've got posts and pages. Well, a post is something that changes like a blog or a news posting on your site, whereas a, whereas a page doesn't change often, like an about screen. Let's take a quick look at that. Click on posts. Once you click on posts, it shows you all your posts. There is a quick little hello world post, a message um, like a news item that was created automatically for us. Let's take a quick look at it under posts, hover over the hello world, and then click edit. And this is what was written for us. Welcome to WordPress. This is your first post. Edit or delete it, then start writing. Well, this is how it looks in the back end. I want to see how this looks in the front end. Let's go to our visit site. If you scroll down, you'll see it right there. That's how it looks like. That's how a post looks like to the consumer in the front end, to your web visitor. Hello the world, the date that it was created. That's the text that we just saw. Go back to the dashboard. If you look at pages, there is a page called Sample Page. If you hover over and edit that, it's just some quick stuff here. This is an example page. It's different from a blog because it will stay in one place and will show up in your site's navigation or menu. Most people start with an about page, and then there's some stuff. Now, if we were to visit the site and we look around, I don't see that sample page anywhere. There is no, uh, there is no menu in this site yet. Most websites have a menu, right? They have home page, contact page, products page, whatever. There's no menu yet. We'll do that later but that page doesn't appear anywhere yet. So one thing to be aware of, posts are going to be screens on your site that change like news. And pages will be change the screens that don't change much, like an about page, contact page, etc. Media will have our pictures, you know, the photo uh, the products of photos, video, sound, any multimedia can be uploaded here. Uh, we can put a video into our about page. We can put a, 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 a music file into our product uh, posting and such. So that's where we would manage our pictures. And I don't think there's anything there at the moment. Media is empty. So later on we will add some pictures. It's pretty straightforward. We just add and we'll upload it. We'll do that later. Uh, comments. Uh, the default is that people can comment 
on your posts. You write an article, you put a new news item, and people can leave a, leave a comment, leave a reply. That can be changed, of course. But the default is we've already gotten a comment. We're so popular already. <laughs> a WordPress commenter commented, and he said, hi, this is a comment. OK, well, it's one of these built-in little testing things. And uh, the, this is a, the cool thing about WordPress is that out of the box, we get a system for people to write comments and replies and stuff like that. In the old days of making a website, that was very complex. You had to know PHP and JavaScript and all of these complex languages to do this. This is now built in. We'll see how to use it more effectively a little later. But notice what we've got is we can unapprove, we can delete, we can mark it as spam, we can edit what they wrote. We have full control over what people uh, comment on our site. Um, okay, this is really cool here. Let's go over to this appearance item. Uh, notice a lot of these have sub items, but uh, go to appearance and then themes. Just hover over one of these. It pops out. Hover appearance and then click themes. We saw that the design of our site in the front end looked like this. Themes are the way that WordPress creates a, a design, a style. This is the 2017 theme. It's currently active. We've got these other two built in. 2015, 2016. Let's see what our site would look like if it had the style of 2016. If you hover over 2016, you'll see Activate. Hover over 2016, click Activate, and then go to the front end. Visit site. So we're activating a different theme, and then we're visiting the site. So you see after you activate a new theme, it says here, okay, 2016 is active. Visit site. Now it looks different. That picture's gone. The design's a little different, kind of kind of plain. If you go back to the dashboard, go back to theme, appearance, then themes. 2015. You can try to turn on these other ones. Now, um, this one had a cool picture that didn't show up after I viewed it, but that's just showing you an example of what it could look like. Let's, check, let's activate 2015 and look at that one as well. You can get a little bit of a general sense of what the site looks like from the thumbnail, but not completely. Uh, 2016 has a sidebar, a column on the right. 2015 has a column on the left and a little divider here. So you get a general sense of the, of the view, of the design. This one had a big picture to show off, a product, and then you scroll to see content. But try to turn on the other theme, 2015, visit site, and there it is. So your stuff is on the left, there's the hello world on the right. Shortcut. If you hover over the name of your site, you can go directly to the themes. Well, it comes with three themes built in. And two of the three look very boring. <laughs> so there is a way to customize these. But before we do that, let's do this, which is a very cool feature of WordPress. Uh, let's click here, add a new theme. The great thing about WordPress, like I said, it's a CMS, Content Management System. All your content is your pictures, your text, your products, your colors, your design, and all of that. In the old days, when you created a website with, with the classic code or Dreamweaver and such, it was very difficult to change your design from one style to another. The code was just linked together too deeply. With a modern thing like Squarespace and Wix and Joomla and WordPress, a modern CMS, you can change those things a lot easier because this is basically saying, I've currently got 2017 activated. I'm going to then activate a different design. It's just going to change something very quickly in the database. Uh, we get all of these themes. Here's 15 featured themes, all of these different designs. This one looks cool. I want to use this one. Bo Bohot. I want to hover over that and click Install. This is going to connect actually back to WordPress.org and download this theme. 
And then after we select that, we then activate it, visit site, and then now our, the design of our site has changed. We have a brand new design. Cool, I'm going to have these, these vertical columns in the top bar area. So I'm going to go visit site. Not quite exactly as advertised in the thumbnail. That's normal. That's normal because the thumbnail is showing you like the best example of what it could be. So I was expecting uh, five columns with pictures and such. Well, I don't have five pictures in my site. I don't have five products. I don't have enough content to actually <clears throat> look like my example. Oh, but I see my sample page. This one did put the menu in. If I go look at that sample page, that was that sample that page that I read a moment ago. I don't see a button that says home. Usually you can click on the name of your site and that takes you home. Well, we want to fix that eventually. But if you play with that for a moment, go back to themes, go back to the add new theme. We've got 15 here that are featured. If you go over to popular, see right here we've got 2,987 possibilities. We can go here to the latest one. What's the latest one? And we can then save them to our favorites to, to come back. So with just a, a little bit of searching and and seeing an, an example that I like, I can completely change the design of my site. Now again, these show you on the best possible way. It won't look exactly the same once you activate, but it's exactly the same like when you look at commercials and advertisements for, for stuff, and then when you buy it, it doesn't look the same. You, know, you, you look at that hamburger and it looks amazing, and then you buy it, and then it's all squeezed, and then the, <laughs> the, the, the meat is falling out and everything. Well, they put the best foot forward on these thumbnails, and your site can look like this if you've got that amazing photo, and your site can look like this if you're selling products and you've got these menu items. It's just that these are the infrastructure, these are the pieces that then you can use to put together your site. So this one called Bulk looks really cool. I'll install it. I'll activate it. And then I'll go visit it. OK, it did come with the picture in this case. Victor's Bakery up there, cool. I haven't added my menu, so that's empty. I get a search box. There's my Hello World. The text is centered. It's divided out from the background. As I browse these various themes, these that say popular me, uh, means some amount of people also have downloaded them and liked them and used them. Maybe this one over here, magazine shop or righty. Uh, I want to use the theme righty, but using it as is will look the same for myself and the other hundred people or. 20 people or 1,000 people that also downloaded it. So most of these themes have some way to do some basic customization. If you notice, when you have a theme active, customize. If you go explore that for a moment, we're going to cover all of these things in more detail. We're just doing an overview on this first day. But as you go to customize, you see, OK, go over here to change your colors. Go over here to change your background image. Go over here to change whatever. And not every theme has all of these items. It depends on the theme. Some give you more options for colors. Some don't give you an option for a footer. It depends on the theme. And I'm going to say that several times throughout the course. It depends on the theme. People will ask me, can I do this? My answer will be, it depends on the theme. People will ask me, can I change the background color? I'm going to say, it depends on the theme. Can I add that feature to have chat built in? It depends on the theme. The thing about WordPress is it's very modular. Everything can be changed about it, upgraded. It just depends on your theme, on your plugins, on your widgets, and all of these things that we'll learn about. So we can say themes are a way to change the design of your site. There are thousands available, and they have various 
features and customization capabilities. Many are free, some are not. All of these that we're seeing on these screens, I believe these are all the free ones. But there's a whole cottage industry of uh, WordPress uh, designers out there that either give away or sell their themes. Exactly. Uh, you might you might get the free version with some features, and then you want more features, and there's a fee. And usually they're pretty affordable. They're between twenty and sixty dollars one-time fee. Uh, but uh, that's a very common tactic nowadays. Uh, you know, they, they get you hooked on the basic feature, and then you have to pay for the better features. But it depends on 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 the site and uh, what features you need. Um, individuals. And or design studios create and publish themes. A great um, a great um, repository of repository. A great repository of themes. This site that I really like. ThemeForest.net. Uh, very good, professional, powerful, affordable themes are here. Um, you can find many themes all over the internet. If you do a search, you know, if you go to Google or Yahoo or Bing or whatever, and you search WordPress themes, you'll get millions of results. You can search restaurant. WordPress themes, you'll get millions of results. Uh, the problem with just doing a search of the whole internet is you, you don't quite know what you're getting when you're kind of browsing all over the internet. I'm, I'm mentioning this website because it is a very good and reputable and safe site for you to see many more WordPress themes. <coughs> Looking at that site briefly, 41,000 and a half WordPress themes and website templates starting from two dollars so you know you can browse all of these designs shark eight dollars um, you know I'm, I'm, I'm over at the WordPress section I want to look at e-commerce themes here's one thousand two hundred of them sixty nine dollars fifty nine dollars forty nine thirty nine uh, so you, you, you're paying for the design, but you're also paying for tech support. You bought this theme and you want it to behave a certain way and you want to customize it a certain way. You've also paid for the developers to, for that service. In this case, Emotional Themes published this one. Joom Masters published that one. And um, this is just another place to, to get themes. We'll cover this in more detail as we get into uh, specifics. But uh, WordPress is, is modular. Like I said, you can change the, the modules and the features very quickly, very easily. Let me make some notes here regarding the three levels of web design. Beginning, intermediate, advanced. Now, regarding WordPress, we have um, install a theme and use it with minimal customization. Customization. When you uh, when you download when you add one of those themes, it has that customize button, right? And that customize button might let you change the font or the background color or the picture or whatever. You have some ability depending on what the developer allowed for you to customize it. That's the beginner level because you might not have a lot of ability. They might have made it simple for you to only change your text color but not your columns or whatever. They don't want you to break the site. 
So that's beginning level. Intermediate level is install a theme, but then, so we'll say, you know, quotes, same as above there, install a theme, but then write, but then add uh, custom code. Install a theme. But then add custom code. WordPress shields us, but like I said, every website is made out of various code, various languages. One of them is HTML. Let's pull back the curtain and see that in WordPress here. In the appearance, go to editor, right there. What that does is it pulls back the curtain. Modern versions of WordPress pop up to tell you, heads up, you appear to me be making direct edits to your theme. Okay, great, I understand. What this is saying is you're about to look at the guts of your website. This is like popping the hood of your car. And if you're not comfortable changing your own spark plugs, you take it to someone that is, right? Here is your website. And here it is. I'm going to change the margin of my captions to 10 pixels. If I understand what that code means and what it does, I can make changes to the deep levels of my website. If the, if the theme author only allowed a certain customization, but they didn't allow me to change my font, in the code somewhere here, I can find it and say font size 25. If they didn't allow a certain edit, you can make all the edits you want in the code. WordPress allows that. You can completely edit every aspect of your site if you know the code. And this, of course, if you don't, is very complex. And if you make a mistake, if I delete something, that could break the whole site. Not one command, not one line, one character. I deleted a curly brace here, and that could break my whole site. That's why you get that big pop-up that tells you, heads up, you're about to make deep changes, be careful here, make a backup and such. And uh, this screen is the power user screen. Has anyone taken any classes in HTML, CSS, or JavaScript? A couple of people. So this should look familiar. Uh, most of us that haven't, perhaps, this is gibberish. This is scary. And I would not be making changes here unless I know what I'm doing. Question? Uh, you make changes in your site, CSS or JavaScript, and they do an update to the theme. Could they, couldn't they overwrite your changes? It will. That's part of what that pop-up is saying. Let's see if I can make it pop up again. But yes, if you make, custom, if you make changes to your custom code here, and when we talk about updates, and you make an update, it will overwrite your changes because it needs to give you the latest version of the code, not your code. We will talk about backups and using child themes and doing it the right way. But yes, the, what you're saying, it will happen. It will erase your custom code whenever we do any updates to our software. So this is the intermediate level. Install a theme, then add custom code. If you explore this screen a little bit, uh, you know, there's a, there's a screen over here. Well, I want to go edit my sidebar. I want to edit it more than what the, uh, what the theme author allowed. But it's not going to be anything easy. Look, this one little screen here is what's editing your sidebar. And it's like, well, how does that even create my sidebar? This is PHP and other complex code, and it's complex. <coughs> the third level advanced write all the code from scratch for a brand new site that HTML code and CSS and JavaScript and all of that you can learn that you can take classes on that you can read books on it you can get tutorials you can watch YouTube videos but a site such as w3schools.com learn for free HTML, CSS, JavaScript, or take our classes at our college here. But the advanced level is you learn the code yourself, and the purpose of that is to create your own completely unique site. The beginning level, my site might look like someone else's. All of those um, free to download themes, I like it in 10 other people. When I go to Theme Forest, I'll pay $69 for that theme, and so will 100 other people. And 
based on what the author allows, the customization might not be enough to differentiate my site from someone else's. I may or may not care about that. Next level is, OK, I'm going to buy a theme. And because I can, the WordPress license allows this, I can then write my own custom code. And I bought a theme, but I want to change it more than what the author allowed. Um, and the third level is, I, I don't want my site to look like anyone's sites in the world, so I'll design it from scratch, which is very complex, very time consuming. Think about it in terms of like in the real world. This one right here is like, let's say you're buying a house and it's turnkey. That means you buy the house, it's ready. Furnish, turnkey, walk in, I got a new house. I'm going to perhaps put new wallpaper or maybe put some new paintings on the, on the walls and such, but the house is as is, not a lot of customization. Intermediate is, maybe I buy a fixer-upper. I buy a house, but I want to change the cabinets in the kitchen. Uh, I need a more modern bathroom, but I bought it for the location, the structure, the aesthetics of the house, but I make some changes. The third level is, I buy an empty plot of land, and I bulldoze it and make a house. And almost no one does that. So for this, this uh, regarding websites, it's perfectly fine to make your site in the beginning level because le levels higher than that are complex. Levels higher than that are, are difficult and can break your whole site unless you know this code and are comfortable making changes and all of that. Most of us are not because it's, it is complex. It's a different skill set. Yes? Is it possible, um, I, I, I see that my site got some problems with this. Every, every WordPress site in the world at the admin page, WP dot dash admin, admin. Yeah. You change that so not every hacker in the world knows your admin page. Yes. Yes, there is a way to change that, and we will be covering that okay. uh, because. Uh, that's a good point, right? Every WordPress site has picturesbakery.com slash WP admin. We will have a way, we'll, we'll cover a way uh, to change this to something like that. picturesbakery.com slash something, and then no one will know where your login screen is except for yourself. Yeah. It's just that the default is that, which we can change. Now, as I said, I teach this stuff, but I also am involved in a company that we do this for clients. And when we get hired by a client, we tell them early on, OK, uh, we're going to make you a website. You need an e-commerce website or whatever. And we're going to use WordPress. And WordPress is this. And it uses themes, et cetera, et cetera. And these are your options. Uh, we uh, will we'll sit with you. We will browse the theme. A repository. We will go to Theme Forest. We will look at themes. We will talk about what aesthetic you like. We'll recommend this theme or that theme. You tell us what you like. And then that's, that's one level that they could hire us for. And then we'll do some basic customization. And you know that, that's a very affordable some amount of fee for that. Well, they say, OK, uh, we actually want more customization than the default. Can you, can you do that? And we say, of course. We're going to write some custom code. We're going to change it. We want the basic design to start off with, but we're going to change the columns and whatever. That's going to be a little bit more expensive. And then, OK, well, I want a brand new website uh, different from my competitors with no one else uh, to, uh, that, that has that style in the design. How much are you going to charge us for that? <laughs> well, that's going to be a little bit more. But we tell them, don't hire us for this. Don't waste your money on us for this. You don't need a custom site that no one else in the world has. You need intermediate or beginner because use the rest of the budget on social media, SEO, blogging, all that extra stuff. Because you have an amazing website that no one knows exists, that you're getting no traffic to, that is not being found on Google. Well, besides having an amazing website, there needs to be marketing and optimization for it. So we tell them directly early on, these are the levels. This is obviously most profitable for us, but we tell them don't hire us for that. Spend somewhere over here, and then also hire us to do the social media and such. Uh, because it, it really is necessary nowadays. And the, and the SEO, the optimization, and all of that, it, it is necessary. That's why, oh, I, I teach those classes for free at this college. Teach you how to make the website, teach you how to optimize it in the, in the Friday class, 
teach you how to use uh, social media in the online class, teach you how to write blogging blogs next month, and you're free to take those classes multiple times. They don't have to be taken in any order, but they all fit together. I designed those classes this way, that they're all these little modules. I have a website, I just need to know how to market it. There's the SEO class. I uh, need a website, that's this class. I have a website, I know how to market it, but I don't know how to set up Google Analytics. That's the SEO class. I don't know how to create a marketing strategy or a competitor analysis. Those are my other classes. So when we get hired, we give them that full package and say, it's not just your website. You need these other things as well. And that's where your money is better spent. For, yes? Yes. So that's why these other um, tiers, you know, you're not getting a cheap website or whatever out of that. You're getting a good website still that has a good design and structure and features. You're populating it with your content and you're hiring us to maybe teach you how to use it and such once you know how to use it yourself and have at it. You know, whatever contract we set up with the client, maybe they just hire us to install it and train them. That's it, done, and then they work on their site. Other clients we have, we have an ongoing thing where we designed their website a year ago, but then we update it, we maintain it, we keep it current. Other clients that hire us also to do their social media, to be active on their Facebook and answer customer questions and all of that. <clears throat> It's not going to be that difficult. Once you know, once you get around this dashboard, and once we get into it in more detail on the next class, we'll see it's not that difficult. The hardest thing really is the stuff we did at the beginning of the day about web server and PHP, my admin and installing. Once you're in here, it's very straightforward. You, you get lost on the screens in the beginning, but once you understand, okay, I'm going to, when we add it, when we add uh, e-commerce, I'm going to have a new item here called products. And once I have that, I just click on products, add new product, and then go through the, the screen about creating a product. This dashboard area is not that difficult. It's the setup, the maintenance, the updates. That's a little more complex. There's some more practice right there that you might want to play with. And then we've got, uh, okay, so other things. You can extend the capabilities of the site through plugins. We'll look at that in detail later, but a plugin is like an extra mini app that you can add to your site. At the moment, WordPress does not have e commerce features, it doesn't sell products at the moment. Uh, in the second half of the class, we're going to install a plugin to do e commerce. And there, there, as many things in WordPress, there's the free and not free versions. But the free versions are often good uh, and work for most people, most clients. The uh, not free versions add more features, oftentimes like tech support, like contacting the developers directly to, uh, to troubleshoot stuff. So users, tools, and such. We'll look at those things also next time. Um, note. Your site is not live at the moment. Uh, it's not on the web. It's not on the internet for other people to visit yet. It only exists on your computer, the one you're currently sitting at. It's a local installation. When the site is ready for the world, we're going to upload it to a server when it's production ready. Uh, we're going to learn the basics of WordPress, which is my uh, what my preferred e-commerce plugin is. Recommendi recommendations for when we want to upload it and be ready for everyone to use and for free. Uh, when you're ready to go live, you must pay for a domain name and server hosting, and we'll cover that later. That'll be GoDaddy, Bluehost, etc. We'll cover that later. Yeah. Just real quick, um, uh, are you worried about, or I guess one you use is okay, the um, concern I have with a plugin with e-commerce is you're taking people's credit card information. Mm -hmm. How secure are these WordPress plugins? We're going to cover uh, two of the biggest, most popular ones. And when you're big and popular, like the ones we'll talk about, you have to be secure and trustworthy because there's a lot riding on your, on your company's success. Anyone can create a theme. Anyone can create a plugin. But we, of course, are going to focus on the ones 
that are the most well tested and secure and ones that I've used for clients that I would vouch for. We'll talk about best practices and security and all that credit card information. We'll talk about how to keep that safe and secure. Yes? Isn't, doesn't the SSL certificate tie into that somehow? Yes, uh, to add security to your site. When you visit many websites out there nowadays, they have a little lock up here. And the address nowadays is also HTTPS for security. If you look at our site, there's no lock there. And we're not on HTTPS. That's your security certificate, SSL, so uh, security sockets layer, I think. And to get that security on a site, that's also a paid thing. And we'll, we'll cover that later. But that is also through Bluehost or GoDaddy and such. And that's separate from the security provided by the it's very it's very closely related that SSL certificate is the main step to create security on your website and we'll cover others as well well as we wind down the main lecture to have a little bit of open lab in a moment we've created this site we've had to go through some steps of that were technical regarding databases and such but we've got a site now you've got a site that you can explore you can make changes you can make mistakes that no one will, will see until it's ready to be uploaded and when we come back Thursday I want to continue and keep working on this now the problem is that you cannot simply put your site on a flash drive and walk home with it we have to have a little procedure to back up the site to take it with us. Um, we'll do that next time. This site that we're working on right now is not important if we save it or not because next time we're going to create it again. We're going to get the practice of using phpMyAdmin, downloading the software, setting it up. Again, we're going to practice that a few times together. Then, at the end of the day, next time, we're going to make a backup of our site exactly where it is so that we don't have to start over on day three. I don't want to have to start over and have everything empty and put my products in again. But we will the first couple of times for the practice. We've got a plug-in that will allow us to make a perfect backup of the site, and that we will take home with us. And that you can use at home on your Mac, and that we can bring back week, day after day. But we won't do that until next time because I've got to do something to incentivize you to keep coming back. <laughs> and I've got a handout for you and everything, and we'll record it and all of that. So this site that we're working with, just you know, look at it for the day. When we come back Thursday, it'll be gone, because when these computers restart, everything erases. They go back to our factory settings. We'll have some lab time until 9.30 if you want to keep practicing, if you want to print out the handouts, if you need one-on-one -on -one help. I'm going to end the main lecture, but any general questions on the things we talked about today? I'm going to put these handouts, I mean, I'm going to put these notes that I've been writing. I'm going to put it into the network folder. Um, I'm going to put it into the network folder. I'll turn on the printer.